Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, my friends, and welcome back to the City Conservation Center. Hope you guys are all having wonderful days so far. So as we get started today, and my music starts to play on my laptop, I do want to thank you guys for stopping by. I finally, finally, about time, uh, gotten this huge lick of inspiration back for the City Conservation Center. I know in a few other videos, I've kind of been like, well, yeah, I'm not really feeling it, but this time, oh my gosh, I am feeling Feeling it. I am really feeling it. So today I really want to do something nice and quick. Uh, not really quick, but something really simple. So I'm doing some lemur islands. I know, very, very innovative right there. So I'm building for all three lemurs that we officially have in the game. Those are the black and white ruffed lemur, which is my personal favorite. We also have the ring-tailed lemur and the red ruffed lemur, all really awesome creatures. And I just can't wait to talk about them some more. But before we do that, I do want to talk about the habitats. I am keeping this very in line with the side main habitat. I really want it to feel really artificial uh in a sense i don't really want to go ham with like you know all the natural decor just yet the surrounding area will have a lot of that but for the islands themselves i did want to have them feel a little bit more solidified very much like our primate islands that we're gonna have throughout here i think it's gonna be a really awesome style that we can have going on through here and i'm so excited to get into it all but before we get into all the other stuff i do want to talk about the lemurs that we have so these islands are based off of capron park zoo's lemur islands very slightly however though that is a local zoo that Nick and I actually do have a speed build series of. We're trying to recreate it, but you guys may be wondering where the hell has it been? It's been quite a few months. I have not been to Capron in some time. I think I may go this weekend or something like that. I'm not entirely sure, but I've got to go back eventually just to get that inspiration back up. Uh, we kind of stopped dead in our tracks right there, but we will get back to that jazz in just a bit. But yeah, our lemur islands over here are based off of those once very slightly it's very much loosely inspired by them but this is a really awesome way to display three species at once so the lemurs that we have over here need to actually be separated i don't think i've actually seen ruffed lemurs mixed with ring-tailed lemurs ever i'm not sure if there is interspecies like breeding going on over there like hybrids that you can get from there but i know for certain you can get red ruffed and black and white ruffed hybrids and we got to make sure that we don't do that because as we are the city conservation center we don't do those kind of skeevy low budget zoo kind of hybrid stuff like ligers and stuff we got to make sure that we do have like the top quality animal care and welfare as possible and you can see just by how we're addressing like all the welfare issues around here we do make sure that we make custom climate frames for these guys this is like one of the first things like i've ever this is like one of the first times i've ever done custom climbing frames in such a long time and it was super fun so we do like very simple ones just getting my feet wet with it before we start to get into like you know all the other monkeys that i want to throw in here i know i want to get like orangutans and stuff like that in this area but we'll be building for those later down the line once i actually do get the inspiration for them but for the time being we do get started on our little lemurs over here just to like you know touch on this area a little bit and as you guys can tell from the rest of the zoo i do have a little bit more of a mixed kind of approach when it comes to building my zoos you can tell that we're kind of bopping all around the zoo if i ever do go up to like a top-down perspective you'll start to see that many areas are starting to start in the, like their own respective corners and they are starting to get fleshed out as time does move on so that's kind of my goal for over here and you can see i give each island a little bit of enrichment or a little bit of food one or the other not really going too crazy you could imply that they do have more stuff that's usually how i approach things and i'm also adding these wonderful ladders i think these are made by mr domez correct me if i'm wrong but it would be a simple way for the keepers to get in and out of the boats and yes the keepers would hypothetically use the boats they aren't really able to in game and yeah i know a lot of people who play like franchise mode by the way would you guys be interested in a franchise mode by me i don't know i tried it before i really couldn't get into it it's just not my style but maybe i could get into it relatively soon if you guys if there is even a demand there for it but yeah that's kind of my thoughts right there but no the keepers can't actually access those which i don't mind because i play on sandbox for this zoo anyways uh i really think 
think that it's my best approach to building because I don't really care about the in-game animals. I care about like the implications of them, if that makes sense. Uh, I don't really mind if they're not fed all too much because, hey, they'd get fed realistically anyways. But hey, maybe that's just a little masochist in me trying to be like, oh, my poor animals, they're gonna suffer. Just kidding, of course. But making our way through out here. And we do a little bit of foliage. Nothing too crazy. I really want to have this area feel nice and nestled within this area. But my favorite part of this whole section over here is just the view of the buildings in the back. And I do need to thank my good buddy ZZ once again for putting this map together. He did such an incredible job at creating like a beautiful city map and it is available on the workshop so if you do look up zz's uh workshop code uh you should be able to download this map and make your own little city conservation center but what i really wanted to do is make this area feel like it's a complete jungle within like the rest of the concrete jungle i think that's kind of cute right there so what we do is lay down a whole bunch of plants over here i use a combination of periwinkle i use the yorkshire fog grass the saltwort bushes the bamboo the fountain bamboo then i move on to the bengal bamboo and then i move to bigger trees like the cypress trees you can tell that i do this in an order that makes sense as to what is smallest and what is biggest that's because it really is super easy just to build for the smallest things first and then put the bigger stuff on top of that and you can see i missed out on the uh, cowberry bushes as well over there or no the dogwood rose dogwood dog rose dogwood bushes i don't know uh, but i add those in right there just because i missed out on them and then i move on to the islands themselves i keep these relatively nicely manicured nothing really too crazy because the keepers would need to access this and the keepers would kind of trample on some grass so they wouldn't really be as lush as the rest of the area around them i do not put in like any larger shrubs or anything like that i guess i probably should have but it's something that i neglect in hopes of making this area feel a little bit more better and a little bit more I don't know a little bit more unique to the rest of the area around it then i actually move on to the waterscape so as it is on a kind of like artificial lake i did want to add in some plants here as well because plants would find their way into this area you'd have algae you might even have water lilies in here if like you know the zoo introduced them and they would grow like wildfire essentially so i throw a few patches of them here and there where they would make sense to be so what my kind of frame of reference is, is if a keeper is going to drive the boat through an area, you probably wouldn't have water lilies over there, especially with the reeds as well. So I make sure to add that right there. And one of my favorite things over here is the kind of like bedding area or rather the... I don't know how you would call this. I guess this is like a nesting box. I will be updating that uh, blueprint you guys may remember like the master blueprint of like all the small things i build in the zoo i will be updating that relatively soon i do want to get that out for all you guys because i've had so much fun building like these small little like doohickeys and stuff like that i guess you could call them and it just is super awesome just to be able to build these for you guys especially seeing them be used in like all your zoos it's super it's super fun i really do love it but making our way throughout here i want this area to be like a little nesting box because guess what lemurs do need their own privacy uh they are primates which means they have a little bit more of unique i guess you could say uh care requirements and social requirements so these guys do like to hide a lot and they will probably need like you know larger areas for them to get away from the guests and stuff like that so i keep them nice and high up in the altitudes and it keeps them relatively nice and happy uh, I think they are able to access it, believe it or not, and I also use those new conversa conversation, yeah. I keep on messing that up. I use those no conservation slats over there as a way to get some shade in there, but also allow some more airflow throughout there. I think that's pretty cute, and I also arrange these guys all throughout the habitats, just in wherever makes sense for these guys to get away out of guest view. And I also add some bedding in there as well. And we should probably talk about some fun facts about lemurs. Uh, they do live in matriarchal societies. There is a top female and they do 
establish dominance by urinating, and I think that is pretty swanky right there. Just your little fun fact for the day. I think that's super funny right there. But no, it's just super awesome just to be able to build this. I did build something very much like this back in Riverbend Discovery Center. By the way, go check out the tours for that, both the river tour as well as a full zoo tour. I was super proud of that. I really do hope you guys enjoyed that like whole series. It was such a fun little series to do, and I'm so happy that you know I can finally put a lid on it. That's one of my main goals right now, is just to stop building all these new damn zoos and to finish them once and for all. And yeah, I do hear your pleas. Uh, the Los Monsteros Zoo, I keep on forgetting the name, it will be coming back relatively soon. I have it in the hands of a good friend right now. Once he finishes up what he's doing, it'll be back here. But we should probably talk about this beautiful habitat. That's one of my favorite views right there. With like all the buildings in the back. Just imagine being able to like live over there and look down onto the lemur habitats. It's like a free zoo experience. But thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you guys did enjoy it, I'm not even going to tell you what to do. You guys probably already know. Thank you guys so much for watching. It means a lot for you guys to stop by. Hope you guys have the most wonderful of wonderful days. And I'll see you all in the next episode. Take care and goodbye.